Wow, what a game I got for you now. Uh, we like to look at the top players like Carlson, Anand, Karyakin and the guys, but it's not often that we can follow a prodigy and follow the top of the leaderboard, but we can do it now. There's a new star, a new kid in town, Andrei Ezepenko, remember that name. I'm going to show you a game. This is from the FIDE World Rapid Championship with the white pieces, Sergei Karyakin who was the challenger to the World Championship uh, against Magnus Carlsen last time. So he's the star of Russian chess and he's playing against 15-year-old Andrei Ezepenko. And let's see what happens. Karakin with white, e4. And we see the Karakan by Ezepenko. Knight f3, d5 and knight c3. This is the two knights variation against the Karakan, which is a solid way to play, avoiding a lot of theory. Uh, Fischer like to play like this back in his heyday. He said to g4. This is the most common way for black to play. H3 and black gets the uh, excuse me white gets the bishop pair. We see knight of six on black. D3 and d6. Very solid way for black to play. He gets rid of the white, the light squared bishop and puts his pawn on light squares. Very solid forming a, uh, a pawn front in the center. Basically to d2. This prepares queenside castling, which is uh, the usual way to go for white in this variation. Queen b6, attacking b2, but queenside castles takes care of that. Here, uh, Azabenko played the most common move in the position, d4. Knight went back to e2 for Karyakin. And now c5. Here, the most common move is g4, which is usually how they play in this line, put the bishop on g2. And if white, uh, if black castles kingside, we're going to have attack on opposite uh, wings. But in this game, Karakin went with e5. And this sort of seems to me like the root of, of white's problems in this game. Let's see what happened. Knight came into d5. Now knight f4 by Karakin and knight b4. Now since the bishop pair is one of white's trumps, he didn't want to take on b4, he went king to b1. Now knight d7, simply attacking the pawn on e5. Queen e4, you have to attend to this pawn. And now knight to, knight to c6, and uh, white can't really protect this pawn. However, it seems like he's willing to sacrifice it, and he goes knight to h5. Now, Ezepenko didn't take the pawn. If he does, let's say with this knight, then white will play f4. Knight will jump back, and then something like f5. And now, after uh, putting the bishop on the long diagonal, either by playing g4 or uh, something like this, and white will have a very strong uh, presence on the light squares, uh, good blockade on e4, and a strong unopposed light squared bishop. So such sacrifices are known in the King's Indian defense. And there's a famous uh, sacrifice by Glikoric in one of my pattern recognition videos, which I'll link to. But Azepenko didn't take this pawn. He finished development. He castled. F4 from Karakin, protecting the pawn. But now, Ezepenko starts an attack c4. This has multi-purpose uh, for the black position, a lot of purpose. Bishop a3 is on the agenda, and the knight gets an excellent square on c5. Karakin really doesn't have a choice because c3 is threatened, so he played d takes c4. But now, bishop a3, may threat on b2. So he defends bishop c1. And now knight to c5. The pieces are coming in with tempo. The queen has to move back. And d3, very powerful. Sacrificing a pawn, but once again, the pieces are entering with tempo. Just beautiful chess. He's just, this is just a miniature. He's destroying Karakin. And now knight a4. Threat on b2, you have to do something. There's also a threat of knight c3, so rook d2 seems like it's relatively forced, but now 
knight d4 hitting the queen and have a look at this feast your eyes queen f2 and now and now Ezipenko moves in knight c3 check the king must go to the corner and can you find the beautiful move for black here oh my god such a beautiful move once you know it's a puzzle you can find it queen to b3 caca caca oh my god oh my word look at this oh of course Carrigan didn't take but if he takes just look at this checkmate it's 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 poetry in motion and i'm gonna have fun coloring this unbelievable stuff so it didn't take but it took on c3 but Queen takes c3, and the end is near. Karakin played bishop b2, as he took, rook takes, and now more forcing stuff. Queen b1, uh, queen c1 check, forcing rook b1, and now knight c2 wins the queen, as you have no choice but to take on c2. White has two pieces for the queen, that's not enough, and that's a g3, another powerful move. Opening things up on the queen side. Cutting it took and now rook d4. And this rook is simply coming over to a4, a4 to threaten mate here. And Karikin had seen enough. There's a new 15 year old in town. His name is Ezepanko. Remember that name. I mean, come on, just have a look at these results Artemiev, Malakov, Fedorchuk, Karikin. All around 2700 rapid. And he's beating, beating them all four games in a row. Unbelievable stuff. So a kid to watch out for and he plays Swiddler in the next round.